where we're at today while the children are dismissed. The children's church in the back. The rest of us return to Joshua chapter 4. All right. Love to see a church full of children. Amen. It's a blessing. Um, I, I, this is a part of having kids in the church. I was just, uh, just before church here, I found this random Oreo cookie sitting on the front pew. If it's yours, you can see me after and I'll give it back to you. But uh, that's, that's a part of having young people in church. Amen. You'll see things like that once in a while, unless it was Pastor Forsberg who was up here teaching Sunday school earlier. I don't know. But uh, that's a blessing. This weekend, we celebrate Memorial Day. Memorial Day, perhaps more than any other holiday, was born out of human necessity. Deep inside of all of us lies a fundamental desire to make sense of life and our place in it. That includes a consideration of tragedy and the meaning that's attached to it. I mean, think about it. We send thousands of our boys into harm's way, and for what? They we're desperate to attribute meaning to tragedy, and rightly so. We ought to remember the sacrifices of those that gave their lives for us. It was in April of 1863 in Columbus, Mississippi, after decorating the graves of her two sons that died for their beloved South, an elderly woman walked to two mounds of dirt off to the corner outside of the regular uh, cemetery there, and she placed some flowers on the graves. And her neighbors and friends shouted at her, what are you doing? Those are the graves of two Union soldiers. And she said softly, I know, but I also know that somewhere in the north, a mother mourns for them as we do for ours. This loving deed set in motion uh, a celebration that has become known as Memorial Day. On Memorial Day, we honor the memories of all those that sacrificed uh, and have even uh, they gave the ultimate sacrifice in the service of the United States of America. We would do well to remember those who sacrificed for us to ensure our freedom this morning. We honor the memory of all of those who gave their lives on that altar. We want to assure that those sacrifices were not given in vain. That's why we remember. Does anyone here struggle with forgetfulness? Besides me, amen. Uh, Pastor Forsberg told me recently, as you get older, three things happen. You start to forget things, and he couldn't remember the other two. But uh, <laughs> age is a terrible thing, isn't it? We make jokes about forgetfulness. I think of the man that went to his doctor and said, Doctor, lately I've been becoming more forgetful. And the doctor said, Well, how long have you had this problem? And the man said, What problem? Uh, we get forgetful sometimes, don't we? How about the forgetful cow that gives milk of amnesia? They don't get better. They only get worse. The group of forgetful congressmen called the Oversight Committee. All right? We'll stop now and move on. But the loss of memory, the loss of memory is a sad thing. It can cut us off from days gone by. It strips away the treasured resource of past experience. It erases our personal history. It leaves inexplicable blank pages. Have you ever been forgetful in your life? Not just remembering uh, what you were going to say or uh, how about remembering what you came into a room for? Have you ever done that before? You walk into a room and just everything poof, goes and what in the wide world did I come in here for? And uh, Or names. We uh, run into someone whose name we absolutely should know and we cannot remember their name. And uh, we resort to, hey, man. Or as a Christian, it's easier. How you doing, brother? Uh, those, those forgetful things in our life. Uh, there's certainly at times it's embarrassing not to remember but for some people, the failure of memory is unavoidable as age comes, and that's just part of, of age taking its toll. But that's not always the case. Sometimes we're forgetful because we, are, we neglect to remember what has happened before us. Uh, we become inattentive to those, thing, those things and those people who have gone before us. We center all our attention on our time and our place where we are right now. Um, as uh, the, the uh, you know, some people live as though the present is all that matters. 
uh, as if the past can be cast off and forgotten like an old pair of, sh of shoes. And here we are with Memorial Day upon us, and we remember and respect those who have died and those whose days are gone. Now, it's no surprise that many do not reflect on this special day as anything more than just another holiday, another day off work. Our society has a problem. In our modern age, we don't tend to look to the past for our wisdom. We view what has been to being irrelevant to what is now. Those of you who are older, who have some experience behind you, haven't you found that to be true? Uh, there's less and less interest in the things that we know, the experiences that we, in fact, we sometimes are become marginalized in society, even though we should be valued. Uh, the fact that our society today, uh, it, there's something that we struggle with called cancel culture. There is a concerted effort to remove ancient landmarks to destroy any memory of what has gone before us. George Orwell made this statement. The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. Is that not what is happening in our day and age today? That's a, an effort being made as we tear down statues and remove names that reflect our history. In 2020, at, uh, no, no less than 94 Confederate statues were taken down in the United States. And I believe 100% that the destruction of these monuments is more about power in the present than the memory of the past. And it's a tragic thing when people disregard their past. Now truly, uh, and I have found this to be true probably in any time, but maybe more today than, than ever before, uh, people really tend to view the world as having begun the day they were born. You ever felt that way? I mean, I, I know intellectually that the world was existing before March 28, 1974. It must have been a dull and dry place before then. But we understand intellectually that it existed, but we really kind of look at time as beginning when we began. And it's a sad world when the ancients are not our models, the elderly are not our guide. We place very little value on, on uh, traditions and inherited customs. And so when Memorial Day comes, as a nation, we don't, uh, many people do not automatically turn and with gratefulness to the past and those that came before us. It's just another day off work. 75% of us will have a cookout. 818 hot dogs per second will be consumed tomorrow many of those by our interns. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no wrong. I'm going to probably uh, partake in having a cookout. And I love, there's few things I like better than a good hot dog. Amen? That's a good thing to have. But I challenge you to take it a step further. And I want to challenge you today with this message, why it is important for us to remember. We're in Joshua chapter 4. And I want to read starting at verse number 1. And it came to pass... When all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take ye twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your, your God and to the midst of Jordan. Take up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come saying, What mean ye by these stones? Verse 7. Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Why should you remember? Father, I pray you'd help us. Bless the reading of your word and our discussion of it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a value in remembrance. You see, a failure of memory is a great spiritual danger for us. Uh, forgetfulness, uh, failing to remember the important things... Uh, in our faith can help you to fail in your faith. 
Forgetfulness erodes the foundation of your relationship with God. In Judges chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says that the children of Israel served false gods and they forgot the Lord their God. And the Israelites worshiped the golden calf even long before this because it, and it tells us why in Psalm 106, 21, they forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. Uh, a, God's people were complaining. And Psalm 106, 13 tells us why they complained. They soon forgot his works and waited not on his counsel. A quick scanning of the word of God shows us the importance placed on remembering. We find references to monuments, memorial feasts, and stories passed on. And the, we, uh, all these serve to reinforce a sacred memory for the people of God. The acts of God were to be rehearsed over and over. They were to be passed on to their children. They were to be talked about. They were to be remembered so that people would not forget what he did for them and for their sake. Now, tomorrow is Memorial Day. But to those who have lost a loved one, in military service or some other military action. It's not just another holiday. Memorial Day is a day set aside to remember those who gave their lives for the freedom that we all share. Uh, no one is really sure when and where Memorial Day began. More than two dozen towns in America today claim to be the birthplace of Memorial Day. It was first formally observed in Arlington Cemetery in, on May 30th, 1868, when they placed flowers on all the graves north and south of, of soldiers and uh, to, to remember what they had sacrificed. After World War I, uh, it, this expanded to include not only the soldiers from the Civil War, but also uh, the, guy, uh, the men who gave their lives in every other war as well. And tomorrow, all across America, people of all ages, ethnic backgrounds and faiths, will join together to remember the sacrifice of men and women made in battle so that we can enjoy our freedom. Do you know that the Bible is full of memorials? Uh, they're, the, they're found all throughout Scripture. The words remember, remembrance, and memorial are found more than 230 times in your Bible. It is an absolutely biblical thing for us to have a memorial day. Memorial Day is important to us, not only as Americans, but also as Christians. And it's important, and I want to give you three reasons today that answer the question, why should we remember? Number one, Memorial Day is a day for remembering. As Americans, we have the opportunity to remember the brave soldiers who sacrificed their lives to defend our country. John, Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 13, Greater love hath no man than this, then he lay down his life for his friends. One of the reasons that America is so great is because we are largely defended by people who do so voluntarily. They volunteer themselves to go and fight on our behalf. Now, there are some exceptions, but largely that's the case. Our service men and women have been willing to do that since the founding of our nation. In the Civil War, the North lost 498,000 soldiers the South, 133,000 soldiers died. In World War I, 116,000 soldiers gave their lives. In World War II, 407,000 soldiers gave their lives. 54,000 American soldiers died in Korea. Uh, 58,000 died in Vietnam. 148 died during Desert Storm. And 4,400 and adding up uh, American soldiers have died in Iraq. Other conflicts and casualties have happened as well. More than a million Americans have died in battles and wars and skirmishes fighting for your freedom and mine. So when the pledge is recited, stand up straight, put your hand on your heart. When the anthem is sung, stand and take off your hat and give reverence to the flag. I make no apology for this statement. Only a reprobate will take a knee when the anthem is sung. Only a reprobate. If, they, if men can die for it, I can stand for it. Amen? And so we take it even beyond that. What Thomas Jefferson said, patriotism is not a short and frenzied burst of emotion, but a long and steady dedication of a lifetime. Our text that we read gives us an example of this memorial practice. It tells the story of the Israelites' long-awaited arrival in the promised land. 
for 40 plus years. They've been wandering in the desert. They finally come to the promised land and there they come up against Jordan River and it's swollen to overflowing. It is blocking their way in the land, but that did not stop them. When the priests that were carrying the ark came and as soon as their foot touched the water, the water ceased flowing and it parted and they walked across on dry land just like their forefathers had done at the Red Seas escaping from the Egyptians. And so when they finished passing over the Jordan, then God gave Joshua a commission that we read about. Build a monument to commemorate this event. The purpose is to remind people that their very existence uh, is in the hands of a living God. He is the one who gave them this victory. The Passover feast that Moses instituted years before this had the same purpose to remind people that it was God that brought them out of slavery. It was God that gave them their freedom. A memorial day, if you will. That's all the Passover really is. A call to the Israelites is repeated throughout Scripture. Remember that God called Abraham uh, in his old age and promised him a nation. Remember that you were in bondage in a foreign land and God gave you freedom by divine power. Remember that God brought Israel to greatness even though she is weak. The, the psalmist summed it all up in Psalm 105.5. Remember his marvelous works he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Those who forget the past fall into thanklessness. And we'll do no better if we don't remember. If we forget the value of our heritage and the source of our blessings, it becomes very easy to start to take for granted all that we have and all that we are. It becomes easy for us to believe that we make our own way, we make our own fortune, and we do it without God. But James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above and cometh from the Father of lights. In the blindness of our own pride, we begin trusting in our own wisdom and power rather than relying on the guidance and the might of our Maker. That's why we need to remember. We ought to remember those who have gone before us and sacrificed for us. But as Christians, Memorial Day is also a time for us to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. He sacrificed His life to give us eternal life. I remind you of the words that came directly from his mouth when he said, this do in remembrance of me. This was uh, when he was talking about communion. It was at the first communion. Uh, communion is something we have every uh, the first Sunday of every month. And uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. 24, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. God established the communion as a memorial to his uh, crucified son. And marble crumbles, iron rusts, dates drop off the calendar, records deteriorate, streets are renamed. But Christians for 2,000 years have been taking that reminder of the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is given as an ordinance to the church. Why? Because we need to remember what he done for us on the cross. Inscribed at the base of the Lincoln Memorial. I've never seen it. I want to one day. But it, uh, descri inscribed on the base is these words, are these words. In this temple, as in the hearts of the people for whom he saved the Union, the memory of Abraham Lincoln is enshrined forever. In the same way, the memory of Jesus Christ ought to be enshrined in our hearts forever as well. That's what remote Memorial Day is all about. It's all about remembering. Remember those who gave their all for your freedom. Remember the one who gave his all for your eternal freedom. Charles Spurgeon said, we ought to never forget the three what's. The three what's. What from? Believers are redeemed from hell and destruction. What by? By the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What to? To an inher inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, one that will not fade away. Memorial Day is a day for remembering. Memorial Day is also a day for rejoicing. As Americans, we can rejoice for the freedoms that we have in this country. The men and women who gave their lives in service for our country did not do so for nothing. They paid a great sacrifice and we have benefited from it. They died fighting for the freedom that we celebrate on this Memorial Day. We have the freedom to vote uh, for our leadership in this nation. We have the freedom to debate 
who we should vote for and who we will not vote for. Although today, those very freedoms are under attack. And may I say, as many who went before us, we ought to be willing to fight for those freedoms and maintain them. Unless we are willing to fight for freedoms, we will lose them. The truth is, though, still today we have more freedom than any other nation in the world. And uh, the men and women who died for this country are the ones who provided that for us. We have the freedom to assemble together to, right here in this building this morning. Do you understand this is not common across this world? We can come together today and sit in a nice building and hear from the Word of God and worship the God that we love. In 51 countries today, I could be imprisoned or killed for doing what I'm doing right now, preaching from the Word of God. Tomorrow we gather with friends and family. We give thanks for our freedom here in America. But as Christians, we have even more to rejoice about. We can rejoice about the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. It's a good thing to remember those who died for our freedom, but we also need to remember the one who died to, give a, a, to, to save us from spiritual tyranny. Jesus defeated death and hell that we might have freedom in his holy name. The Bible says in Galatians 5.1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Be thankful for that freedom as well. Jesus Christ died in order to set us free from sin, to set us free from the law, to set us free from death, and so much more. The truth is, the only way to experience genuine freedom is through Jesus Christ. Everything else is just an illusion of freedom. I read a story a few years ago about a prisoner in Sydney, Australia, who had a master plan. He was going to escape. So he had seen a bread truck come every day and deliver bread for the prisoners, and he figured out that he would fit under the hood of this bread truck right next to the engine. And so when the driver was uh, looking the other way, this prisoner climbed into the, into the engine compartment of that truck, made himself very small, and uh, stayed there while the truck exited the prison yard. Well, a few minutes went by, and the truck stopped again, and the prisoner sneaked, snuck, sneaked it out of his, uh, out of under this hood, and he was hot, he was sweaty, and he uh, was dirty, and he snuck out of this truck, and he found himself in the yard of another prison five miles down the road. Our own attempts at lasting freedom often leaves us in another prison five miles down the road of life. It almost sounds anti-American because we like to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. We like that, and that works for many things, but spiritually we can't do that. We can do nothing about our eternal condition. We, uh, salvation and freedom comes from what Jesus Christ did for you, not for what you do for Him. Salvation comes from His gift. We don't earn God's love. We're invited to enjoy it. We're invited to experience it. <clears throat> and we're invited to embrace it. But Romans 6.23 tells us what we earn. For the wages of sin is death. There you go. That's what you earn. You earn death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We earn death, but we cannot earn eternal life. And so He gives it to us because of His uh, price He paid on the cross. Our American freedoms have been bought and paid for with the blood of soldiers. Our eternal freedom has been bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's something worth rejoicing over. Memorial Day is a day for remembering. Memorial Day is a day for rejoicing. And finally, Memorial Day is a day for ringing out the message of God's saving grace. One of our most recognized symbols of freedom is the Liberty Bell. Uh, maybe you've seen it. It's in Philadelphia, Missouri. And... Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they just moved it recently. So uh, it's in <laughs> a little uh, history for you. My wife is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I am from Philadelphia, Missouri. Did you know that? Little town. I went to school at Philadelphia High School for a couple of uh, years. My Philadelphia is not the same size as her Philadelphia, uh, but we're both from the same town. That's why I made that little Freudian slip there. But uh, the... Liberty Bell hangs in the historic district of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She was ringing on July 8, 1776, bringing the citizens together to hear the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence, which would be read by Colonel John Nixon. 
In that moment, the Liberty Bell fulfilled its purpose that is designated by its inscription, proclaim liberty throughout all the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. That inscription comes from Leviticus 25.10. And it's interesting that the purpose of the bell, the Liberty Bell, flows right out of God's Word. So does our purpose. Our purpose flows out of the bell, uh, out of God's word as well. Uh, we are to proclaim liberty, liberty that is available only through Jesus Christ. No longer do you have to be a slave to sin. No longer do you have to be held captive by fear and doubt. Jesus will set you free. And we're to proclaim that message. John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall set you free, ye shall be free indeed. Whether it is addiction, sin, guilt, destructive habits, depression, misery, a life without meaning, Jesus Christ will set you free. And He wants to do so today. Say, how does He do that? Well, He does that by us giving our lives to Him. Phillips Brooks made a very interesting statement. No man in this world attains freedom from any slavery except by entrance into some higher servitude. You hear that? You know how you get free out of your... Slave masters of sin, submit yourself to a higher master, a different master, Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, no matter who we are, American, African, Asian, we all have a common need. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is our need. We have all come short. You might be better than me. I might be better than you, so I might get a couple of steps closer, but it doesn't matter how close we are, we all fall short, every single one of us, because we are sinners. And uh, you say, now I don't believe a loving God will throw anyone into hell. And you know what? You're right. You're right. God doesn't throw anyone into hell. If you go to hell, it's you who sends yourself there. He doesn't send you there. He made a way of escape. He, he says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What more could God do than make it free? What more could He do? He's not going to force you. And so uh, we, that's a message that we can ring to the masses, amen, on this Memorial Day, that what Jesus Christ did for us. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's standard. Freedom from the penalty of sin came when Jesus paid that penalty. And if you choose to reject that, the fault is not on Christ. It is on you. Oh, I hope you've accepted His gift of salvation. As we remember those who fought and died for the cause of freedom, Christians everywhere need to ring out the message of Memorial Day, uh, on Memorial Day and every day that the Lord Jesus Christ is still seeking sinners and there is freedom from spiritual bondage by coming to Him. During the Revolutionary War, Patrick Henry uttered those famous words, give me liberty or give me death. It became a slogan for the revolution as in there were only two options, no other options, liberty or death. As Christians, we need to be grateful for our freedom but also joyful. And so we celebrate Memorial Day to remember those who gave their lives for America and her freedom and as a day to remember, rejoice, and ring out the message of the Lord Jesus Christ who gave His life to guarantee our eternal freedom. We have some great things to celebrate, don't we? Uh, celebrate tomorrow as a nation founded on freedom, but also as Christians we can celebrate and the way that we have discovered to have ultimate freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that is your uh, memorial day for you as well. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. I'd like to ask you a question today. Do you need to experience the freedom that Jesus offers? Are you enslaved by sin, by addiction, depression, meaningless life, all those things that can overtake us. Would you come today? Would you stand along with me as she's playing? The altar's open. If you want somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can know